Hello again, I'm Jean, I'm a knitter, and I am currently going through the process and completing the tasks necessary to be considered a master hand knitter by the Knitting Guild uh, Association. This is a process that requires that I pass tasks at three levels. I'm looking outside, a bird just flew by. Um, three levels of tasks. I'm working on level one. Level one is a blocking research report, which I was working on last night. And currently it's two and a half pages. It's going to get a lot longer. Um, I must do 19 swatches, a number of gauge calculations, and answer, I think it is 22 questions, and I have to knit a mitten. <laughs> I'm still on the preliminary swatch. Yeah, that sounds like I haven't really done much, but I've actually done a great deal. The trouble with the preliminary swatch is that you are supposed to use it to determine what gauge would be optimum for you to work the rest of your swatches in. And I did my first preliminary swatch using wooden needles on wool, which wooden needles are very grippy and the knitting does not slide along the needle easily. That gives you a great deal of control, but I don't actually need or want that level of control. So I am also doing a second preliminary swatch using my absolute favorite, metal needles. The first preliminary swatch I did on metal needles, I totally screwed up the bind off, the very last stitch of the bind off. And I would take it out and I would use a different technique and I would put it back in and I'm pulling on it and tugging at it and trying to pick it out. And finally I said, just stop. The yarn is looking ragged and frayed. You cannot fix this. Just block it, see what you can do. So I went through the blocking process and no, you can't fix that kind of an error in blocking. So I, when I took it off the blocking board, I realized I had done something just as bad, probably. It's supposed to be V-shaped with a flat bottom and a flat top. I had blocked it so that it was flag-shaped with a straight side, flat bottom, straight top with two 90 degree angles at the top and bottom and a sharply angled one side. So I'd made it, instead of a little bit, I'd made it a lot, but it was still straight at the top and bottom. Oh, what a disaster. <coughs> but I had screwed up the last bind off stitch, so that wasn't a problem. Knit the second one and did something to fix that problem. There's a teeny little red thread here. That is attached to a T-pin, but it goes all the way through the center of my swatch and was fastened at the bottom. This gave me a center guideline that I could use to perfectly square up the top and the bottom, and it gave me a exact center point so I could measure to each side and make sure they were even all the way down. This swatch is not completely dry yet. I am not going to remove it from the blocking board, which is a towel covered, one of these inexpensive foam floor mats that I think I got it from Home Depot. I might've gotten it from Target. I don't know. 
I don't remember. It was a lot of years ago. You can use them for a very long time. I'm also using stainless steel tea pins. I don't want any rust marks on my work. And because I have a towel on top of my surface here, I have even pinned the towel down so that the towel doesn't slip, slide, and scrunch and give me two things that I have to keep track of, not only my knitting, but also the towel. I've held the towel down. I don't have to keep track of the towel anymore. It sounds like a lot of work and it sounds like it's really complicated, but I am finding that by putting in that extra guideline, which is done by using this, which is needlework safe, and won't bleed. It's a little like fishing line, but I tried fishing line and fishing line uses dyes that come off on your work. And I'm not going to have that happen, have a little striped line of polka dot bleeding, bright screaming green down the middle of my needlework. Um, using that guideline made it much, much easier for me to keep my work exactly straight and square. It didn't take very long for me to baste it in, maybe a minute at the most, and that included opening the container, cutting the thread, threading the basting needle, and going to town. Whoopee! But it was so valuable and just took a lot of my headache factor out, and I was certain that I was going to be able to get my sample piece perfectly straight, perfectly square, perfectly even, and I didn't have to guess at anything. And that's actually a very useful thing to be able to do. No guesses, no headaches, yay! But because it was all fresh in my head and one of the tasks I have to do in my blocking report is to write up in detail, and they said in detail, how I blocked my swatches. I sat down last night after I had this pinned and safe and just laying someplace behind a baby gate so the dog can't get to it, to dry, sat down at my computer, and typed up what I needed to remember, partly so that I would be able to reproduce it for every swatch I blocked in the future without trying to recreate a wheel. I have all my steps laid out in order. I have all my materials lists and tools lists written up. So I can do this again without having a great deal of trouble. Yay. <clears throat> I'm continuing work on my relaxing sock because until my gauge swatch, this thing, is bone dry and I can mark it and measure it and complete my gauge calculations, I cannot start working on my first actual swatch because I don't know which needles I really am going to use. I know I am going to be able to use metal needles, but I don't know yet which of the three sizes that I used to make my preliminary swatch will be my favorite. They do each create a slightly different fabric, uh, meaning the smallest needles create something that is very tight and dense, and the larger needles create 
something that gets all the way up to pretty loose and floppy. Um, I don't really want loose and floppy, so I'm probably going to go with the middle size needles, but until I complete my calculations, I'm not going to make any assumptions. So I can't cast on for the first of the actual pieces, swatches, that I must complete. Uh, if I feel like it, I might do some more research for the blocking paper or just knit on the socks because knitting on plain old easy to knit socks that don't require I'm not thinking about someone is going to examine these with the fine tooth comb and give me feedback on every single thing I did. I don't want that. I don't have to worry about it for my, this sock. Now, I understand for one of the other levels, I have to complete an actual Argyle sock. Those are knitted flat using a technique called intarsia which means you have blocks of color that are solid blocks of color. And if you don't do it right, what you get is a lot of little teeny pieces of knitting that aren't connected to anything else. But if you do it right, you get Argyle. And I have knit Intarsia before, and I find it when it is geometric, as it is in an Argyle sock, it's actually kind of fun. <clears throat> It's actually kind of fun, but I just don't, I will cross that bridge when I get to it. Right now, I am letting my third preliminary swatch dry completely, and then I will complete gauge calculations and move on. And because people were wondering, uh, let's see, this is the you can't probably see it, but I can. Can you see that one one stitch that's all weird and almost looks like it was split and just, ugh. I don't find that acceptable, and I am not going to submit a swatch that has that problem. I know better. But the rest of the swatch really turned out pretty darn well. Mm, yeah. An elastic, the bind off isn't as elastic as I would like, but we'll live. And that is my weekly update on making progress towards completing level one. If you like it and want to hear more, let me know you liked it and please subscribe.